Yeah. I work starting. How long? How long would you guys suggest waiting before um, starting? We can see how many attendees are, so we can like give it two minutes or when there's like a bulk of attendees. Okay, perfect. Okay, I hit podcast, so. All right, um, I think it's a good time to get started. Um, I've gotten the okay, so let's get to it. Um, hey everyone, um, first of all, I'd just like to say that I am so excited to be here today and to be talking to you all about new voters. Um, as you guys all know, this is an exceptionally critical time to be mobilizing folks and getting out the youth vote. Um, this year, we're in a super unique and super awesome situation where Gen Z and millennials are gonna make up close to 40% of the electorate, which is a huge, huge number and so significant. So it's a really, really cool time to be doing this work. Um, and from the new voters end, on behalf of everyone at our team, it's so exciting to get to work with as strong and involved of an organization as HSDA is. We know it's a really crazy time for everyone. Um, and we really appreciate your support, dedication, and enthusiasm for civic engagement and getting out the youth vote. Um, before we get started, it would be awesome if you could all check in on this little QR code form. I also dropped the link to the form in the chat. Um, so if you guys could all just take a minute to fill that out, that'd be awesome. If you guys could just put like a thumbs up or something in the participant window, that'd be super cool.
Okay, I, I see a lot of responses in the participant window. Um, so I guess now would be a good time to get started with the rest of the training. Um, just to go through, um, just to go through a quick agenda of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, I just wanted to first intro new voters and our goals, talk a little bit about nonpartisanship, um, have a little conversation about voting conversations and how to engage with different language scenarios, Let's go through some planning campaign guidelines, and then just some next steps if you want to get more involved with new voters. Um, but first off, I would just like to introduce myself. Um, my name is Akili Alviki. I am a rising sophomore at Harvard College, and um, I am also the director of training at New Voters, which is why I am running this session today. Um, my background in civic engagement actually also goes back to high school. Um, I started working in voter registration uh, the year after the 2016 election. Um, I grew up in a pretty purple area. My school um, comprised of a lot of different political ideologies and political beliefs. So the 2016 election took a huge like toll on inclusion and we like, couldn't facilitate even the simplest of political discourse, even in class when it was required. It was very frustrating. So a friend and I thought that voting would be a nice nonpartisan issue to unify people, but um, which is why I got into voter engagement. I was actually introduced to new voters in high school as well. Um, and I've extended my involvement through college. Um, I direct trainings also for the Harvard Votes Challenge, which is our like premier civic engagement um, group on campus. And um, I've also extended it to my career. Um, my internship this summer is working on civic engagement with a social impact consulting firm in DC. Um, so all of that said, I don't think I would have found my passion for civic engagement and my enthusiasm for it um, if I hadn't been introduced to new voters back in 2017, 2018. Um, so it's a super cool organization and, and super close to my heart. Um, I'd also like to quick shout out like give a quick shout out, shout out to Milo Chang, who's been working on this summit and also connected new voters to this opportunity. He's actually an intern in the training department at New Voters. So yay, Milo, he's been doing a great, great job. Um, next, I just wanted to talk about New Voters and our goals. So New Voters is a national 501c3 that is dedicated to providing high school students like yourselves um, with the mentorship and resources necessary to uh, conduct your own voter engagement campaigns and your own voter registration drives. Um, our overarching goal with New Voters is to register 100,000 high school students by the end of the summer slash before the November general election. Um, this is definitely a huge number and a very ambitious goal, but we know that with the help of all of the amazing high schoolers like you um, getting on our campaign and working with us, we know that this number isn't nearly as difficult to reach as we think it might be. Um, I just wanted to also talk a little bit about the new voters journey and what a school goes through when they sign on to be a new voter school. So the first step of the process is signing on to becoming a new voter school through our website. Um, you guys have already bypassed this step by being here at this training today. Um, Next, we have all of our schools and student leaders go through a training um, to help them learn more about new voters. Um, this training also includes just planning guidelines, nonpartisanship, much of which we'll be going on today. And you guys have also bypassed this step if you want to sign on to be a new voter school afterwards. Um, after you attend the training, you'll be paired with a college student mentor. Um, they will guide you through an eight week mentorship program to plan and run your summer voter registration drives. Um, each week of the mentorship program is a different activity. It's very well laid out. Um, and I guarantee you guys will love your mentors and your mentorship experience if you choose to go through with it. Um, and the last step is to 
get more engaged. So finish up your drives. If your school's gonna be in person in the fall, run some in-person drives. Um, work on getting out the vote and turning out your friends to the polls and engage in other ways like volunteering for a campaign, doing issue advocacy, or my personal favorite, um, poll working. Um, I encourage you all to find student poll working opportunities in your areas as that's gonna be really big for this upcoming general. And just a couple of resources and benefits that you guys um, will get from being new voter schools. Um, our central resource, resource that we distribute to people is the state by state toolkit. This toolkit includes all of your state's voter registration laws, procedures, quirks, nuances, um, and will walk you through some event ideas for your voter engagement campaigns, um, as well as um, reiterate some of the planning guidelines we're going to go over in this training today. Um, you'll also get access to social media templates and text banking scripts within the next couple of weeks. We've been working on those um, for the last few weeks and we'll roll them out um, as they're getting finalized. Um, New Voters has reached over 100 schools as of now. So that's a lot of like-minded peers. That's a huge network of people who are just as passionate about politics and civic engagement and government as you are. Um, and there are certain states that have awards for civic engagement. Um, for instance, my state, Pennsylvania, has the Governor Civic Engagement Award um, on a school and individual basis. So like if your school registers a certain percent of your eligible senior class to register, you get an award. And also if you do a really great job registering people, um, you get the Individual Civic Engagement Award um, in PA. And I know other states are following suit and have similar programs. So your mentor will be able to get you through these programs and also connect you to other civic engagement opportunities like the ones I was talking about earlier, um, campaigns, issue advocacy, poll working, stuff like that. All right, now that I have talked about new voters a little bit, um, I just wanted to start off with a little piece on nonpartisanship. So New Voters is, in its heart, a nonpartisan organization, which means we can promote civic engagement, we can register new voters, um, <laughs> pun intended, um, and encourage people to vote in the upcoming elections. Um, we can't endorse a particular candidate, endorse a political party, um, or donate or provide resources to a political party either. And in practice, this looks like avoiding any jokes or assumptions about how someone might be voting, um, depending on how they dress or how they look or how they talk or how they act. Um, you also want to avoid engaging in any disagreement. I'm sure you guys have all experienced um, some kind of political disagreement with people. Um, I found that in the voter engagement space, people really like to start fights. So we encourage that you don't engage with it during your voter, voter registration drives. Um, when you are running a voter registration drive, um, whether that be virtually or in person, Make sure you cover up any merchandise, um, t-shirts, sweatshirts, laptop stickers, posters that might show support for any particular candidate or party. Um, when you're registering someone to vote or helping someone to register to vote, someone might confide in you their reason for registering. They might say, oh, I really want to support such and such, such and such policy, or I really want to support X candidate. Um, it's your job to encourage them to register and encourage them to vote uh, rather than um, affirm their reasoning for voting rather than like agreeing with their stance on a certain policy or their feelings about a certain candidate. Um, people will also try to ask you for advice a lot. Um, maybe they feel like they're not too informed on the issues or too informed on the candidates. So it's our job to point people towards resources. We can't encourage people to vote for one party or over the other, vote for one candidate over the other. Um, I just wanted to bring this up because all of you guys are obviously part of High School Democrats of America as a partisan organization. Um, so if you run voter registration drives at your school, you might wanna do so not under the umbrella of HSDA and under like a civic action club or civic engagement club or something like that. 
Um, and when you are starting these efforts, we really encourage you to reach out to um, your Republican counterparts at school. Maybe you have like a high school Republicans club um, that works in your school. So encouraging them to join your efforts and reaching out and make sure that like you're reaching across the aisle when you plan these efforts. Um, next, I just wanted to go through a couple language scenarios. Um, these are just situations that I've run into in my voting conversations. Um, and I'm going to start this off by talking about starting your voting conversation. I find that um, engaging people in the conversation itself can be a little bit tricky um, just because voting is a little bit exclusionary in its nature. But I always like to start with the question, if eligible, would you like to register to vote? So I like to use the clause, if eligible, to give folks the option to opt out of the conversation if they are not eligible. Um, and if someone says, no, thank you, I'm not eligible, um, you can offer them like other resources to be civically engaged. And we really encourage that you don't like question their reason for ineligibility just because that can be a sensitive topic for some people. And even if folks say no, offer them resources to become more aware and informed. So one thing that we did on campus for the primary, for the 2020 primary, was we drafted a one pager that had like all the dates for the primary, all the deadlines for um, different state primaries, absentee deadlines, absentee processes, like all this information on this one pager. Um, and even if people said, no, I don't wanna talk to you, we would force the one pager into their hands um, and leave. <laughs> So that way, even if someone like decides that they don't want to talk to you or they don't want to um, engage in this conversation, you're still giving them access to resources and you're still like providing them with information, um, regardless of whether you actually continue the conversation and registered, registered them to vote. So now just some scenarios and responses you might get to this question. Um, this is probably best case scenario. Yes, I would like to register to vote. Um, the steps that you would take from here are pretty linear. You would direct them to some kind of voter registration tool, whether that be TurboVote or your state's um, voter registration tool, which could be online or on paper, um, and then confirm back with them in two weeks that everything has gone smoothly, their registration went through to their county election office, and they've received confirmation that they are indeed registered to vote. Um, you can also help them check their voter registration status at the end of those two weeks just to like confirm one more time that they are indeed ready to vote for, in the upcoming elections. Um, this next scenario that I've run into a lot is I don't know the issues. I don't know what's going on. I haven't been keeping up. Um, so again, here, um, like I mentioned a little bit before, your job is to offer people resources um, and information, not necessarily any guidance on how they should vote. So ballotready.org is a great resource. Um, it's a website that you use to like put in your zip code, put in your address, and it shows you all of your elected officials, their key issues, um, and who's going to be on the upcoming ballots. Um, you can also like draft a quick one pager that has like state elections, local elections, and the federal elections that are going on um, in your in your area and very nonpartisanly break down the issues that are affecting your community. Um, so again, bottom line here is point people towards resources and don't encourage voting for um, one party over the other. And then also I like to throw in at the end of this piece is that like we really encourage you like from here on out to like keep up with the news and to keep up with political issues just because um, there's a lot that affects your community that you might not even know about. So it's just good to like keep informed. I've also gotten this one a lot. Are you just trying to get me to vote for candidate X? Um, in high school, my political views and my political leanings were not a secret. Um, before I started voter registration work, I retweeted a lot of things on Twitter and posted a lot of things on my Instagram story. So most people at my school knew what way I was voting. Um, 
but after I started running voter registration, a lot of people at my school were a little skeptical. They thought I had some kind of agenda. Um, and a lot of them were like, you're just trying to get me to vote for this party or to vote for this candidate. And I was like, no, um, voting is nonpartisan in its nature. Um, regardless of what way you're voting, you really should be um, taking, taking advantage of the right to vote and taking advantage of the democracy in this country um, to really let your voice be heard. Um, I also like to tell people that like, like generally, generationally, like we're in this together. So a vote is not just like a vote for you, but it's a vote for your whole generation. Um, so those are just some sample responses to this scenario. And lastly, um, I get a lot of, I would, but I'm not old enough yet. Um, and this is something that you'll definitely see because like in high school, I feel like you'll probably be engaging in like the junior senior area. So people still might be 16, 17. Um, you can check if your state has pre-registration. Basically what pre-registration is, is the option to fill out the voter registration form at 16 or 17. Um, your name will be put on a list of pre-registered voters um, with your county election office. And when you turn 18, um, your name will be automatically moved to an active voter roll. Um, so this is a really cool way to engage those older sophomores, younger juniors, and younger seniors um, in the election process. Um, and if they're a freshman or if your state doesn't have pre-registration, again, just like pointing people to those other places where they can still let their voices be heard, like signing petitions, um, working on campaigns, advocating for things that they care about, um, just things like that. So just offering um, alternative resources and alternative avenues for engagement beyond just vo voting. These are just a couple options that you can use for your voter registration drives. Um, so the first option is TurboVote. I'm going to see if my screen share is going to be good and let me can you see the TurboVote website? Yep. Awesome. OK. Um, OK, so TurboVote is an online voter registration tool that redirects folks to their state's own paper or online forms. So I'm just going to quickly walk through it. Um, so you fill out this preliminary form. Um, And it'll ask you if you're registered to vote or not. Um, I'm just going to say no, I'm not sure. And then you'll fill out your address. Um, and it'll direct me to this page saying that Pennsylvania offers online voter registration. Um, and it gives me the option to redirect to paper or an online form. I'll click online. And bam, it will redirect me to the Pennsylvania voter registration form. Um, So TurboVote is a really good option if you go to a school that has a lot of people from other states in it, because you can use this one form to reach like everybody, basically. Um, and also, it's good to reach people in virtual and social distance times, um, just because like it's a short link, TurboVote.org, to post on your Instagram story or to post like in an email that you're sending out to your school or um, on other social media, or if you're text banking, it's like a very, very short um, URL to put in, as opposed to like the very long URLs that the Secretary of State's websites have. Um, so it's just a really convenient option, um, especially now during virtual times. You can also use your state-by-state -state forms. They're found on the state election website um, and the Secretary of State's website. Um, a majority of states, I think it's like 39 or something out of out of 50 have online voter registration, which is 
super cool and super convenient, especially now. Um, so if you're sure that you're only going to be engaging and reaching out to people in your state, uh, feel free to use the online state by state form as well. Um, if you are going to be in person in the fall and would like to use paper forms, just a quick flag about state by state paper forms is that they need to be mailed out to your like specific county election office. They can't just be like mailed to the Secretary of State's office or something. Um, so just making sure that people know the addresses to mail these forms out to. Um, and just another quick flag on TurboVote. Um, I've run into a lot of situations where people think that just because they filled out that preliminary TurboVote form, um, they are good to go and they are registered to vote and they are done. But that is not true. Um, they need to fill out their state's voter registration form in addition to that preliminary turbo vote form um, if they want to complete the registration process. So just making sure um, people you're reaching out to know that it is a two step process. Um, and another advantage to using some kind of online system right now is that it'll send out like email reminders or text reminders automatically. Um, so that's something that you wouldn't have to worry about if you're using a system like this. Um, it sends those reminders out as soon as someone signs up. So there's like built-in accountability with these sites. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to go through some quick facts about voting in America. I'm sure you guys are all familiar, but these are questions that I've gotten from some potential voters. So first off elections, they run on a local state and federal level. So we really recommend that you publicize your local and state elections as much as the federal ones. Obviously, we know what election is going to be getting the most press um, this year, but there are still some pretty consequential state elections and local elections going on. So making sure that you're engaged with what's going on locally um, can be a good way to help people become more aware of your local political scene, because a lot of times like the local officials are going to be making decisions that um, most affect you in your day-to-day -day lives. Um, this isn't too much of a flag anymore, considering that a lot of primaries have passed. Um, but just a quick note on open and closed primaries. Um, this ties directly into the, the party box on every voter registration form. Um, people will ask if they need to declare a party, and the answer is, is if your state has a closed primary, that means you have to register with a party to be able to vote in that state's in that party's primary. So um, Pennsylvania has a closed primary, um, and I am registered Democrat, so I would only be able to vote in the Democratic primary. Um, if we had an open primary, I could vote in either the Democratic or Republican primary. So just letting people know, like quick flag, our state has a closed slash open primary, so you can inform your decision to register with the party based on that. Um, eligibility across the board, um, you must be a United States citizen to register to vote and 18 years or older um, on or before election day. Um, for pre-registration, you can of course fill out the form, but you can't actually vote in the election. Um, you have to be a resident of the state in which you're res in which you're registering, which means you have to have like a residential address within that state. Um, and there are mental health and criminal justice restrictions on um, registering to vote. Um, just a quick note on the resident of state piece. Um, for some states online voter registration tools, you need to have like an ID from that state or a driver's license from that state to register online. So if you are using an online tool, just make sure folks know that. Um, state by state guidelines will be covered in your toolkit. So if you sign on to new voters, you'll get to learn a lot about how voter registration works in your state. Um, this is just the, the part about planning your campaign. Um, at New Voters, we like to split our campaign planning into three stages. So the first is engagement, then registration, and then turnout. So the engagement part, 
focuses on making sure people have the information, um, know about the issues, and are politically engaged. So this could be um, you distributing nonpartisan information about who's going to be on the ballot. This could be you getting some local elected officials to talk about what's happening in your town locally um, in the political scene. Um, so just things that increase someone's awareness of what's going on um, and gets them more engaged politically. The next piece is registration. This is just the physical act of filling out the registration form, getting your voter registration confirmation card in the mail, um, and being registered to vote. So these events are largely going to be your registration drives, whether they be in person or virtual. Um, and then the last bit is turnout. So you've learned about what's going on politically, you've registered to vote, and now it's time to put all of that together, turn out to the polls, and turn your ballot in. Um, so this is just maybe posting social media posts on how mail-in procedures work in your state, or planning like a walk from your school to the polls to make sure that people have like a way to get to like the polling location. So anything that encourages people to actually get to the polls and vote and get their ballot in. Just some like basic timeline um, guidelines for voter engagement right now. Um, from now through July, we recommend that you are planning your voter engagement drives, your voter registration drives, sorry, um, and maybe doing some social media campaigning, making some materials to raise awareness. So really working out that engagement piece. And if you haven't built your team already or know who you're working with, um, we recommend that you do this also during this time. Um, from August out to National Voter Registration Day, that's what that NVRD stands for. Um, National Voter Registration Day is a holiday type thing at the end of September. It basically just warns for upcoming voter registration deadlines as a lot of them happen late September, early October. So from August until that date, we recommend that you do rigorous text banking and social media campaigning um, to actually register people to vote. Um, I think there's a question in the chat or in the Q&A about um, how we can register people to vote in socially distanced times. And the best solution that new voters has been able to come up with is text banking to register, phone banking to register. Um, so this is the time where you should really, really be pulling out the stops and reaching out to people nonstop if you're doing it that way. Um, you can also do more involved engagement events like virtual town halls with local elected officials, um, maybe some mock like debates or something um, with people at your school just to raise awareness and to give people information. Um, and if you are able to run in-person drives, then running in-person drives. From National Voter Registration Day out to November 3rd, the day of the election, um, we recommend that you're still working in the engagement piece. So making sure people know who's on the ballot locally at the state level and federally, um, and then planning for turnout activities. So. Um, posting on your social media about how to find a polling place. Um, there's usually a tool on your Secretary of State's website that like lets people find where they actually vote in your town, um, posting about how long the polls are open and giving people information about like timing and, and mail-in ballot requests and all of that good stuff. Just really anything that's going to help someone get their ballot in, um, we recommend doing from National Voter Registration Day out to November 3rd. Um, these are just a couple tips on recruiting a team. Um, just some, some things that I've learned throughout my time doing voter registration drives um, and the rest of the team and new voters has learned. Um, so the first thing is to recruit organizations from other parties to make your work as inclusive as, part as, as possible. So this is a really good way to emphasize to people that this drive and your work is truly nonpartisan. Like I said before, um, and I can't emphasize this enough, like voting unfortunately has become a partisan issue and has become a partisan topic. Um, so people are going to might think that like you're only doing this to get them to support a certain candidate. 
um, or to achieve a certain political agenda. But um, those are not your intentions. You just want to make sure that everyone is able to get their voice heard in the upcoming elections. Um, so just recruiting organizations from other parties. If you run a town hall with local elected officials, make sure you're reaching across the aisle and getting people um, who represent both parties um, to come and speak. Um, anything you can do to make your work appear as nonpartisan as possible um, is great. The second thing is to recruit from a diverse range of organizations. So you guys probably come from a wide range of, of school sizes, ranging from pretty small to really big. Um, so make sure that you and your efforts are well connected throughout the student body. Um, you're reaching out to organizations that you're not a part of, and these don't even have to be political organizations. So like reaching out to sports teams and STEM clubs and music organizations, and all of that. You just want to make sure you're connected to as much of your student body as you can possibly be um, so you can maximize your impact and reach um, a wider scope of students. We also recommend that you gain administrative and faculty support. Um, your administration and faculty can be really, really helpful in these um, voter registration planning times and running times and all of that. Um, they also might have good connections to community leaders that can help you increase your impact through this work. Um, and they can make a lot of logistical things like very easy for you. Um, I, my friend and I, when we were running our voter registration drives, established administrative support very, very early on. Um, and we found that our administration was pretty much like willing to support us in any way possible. Um, they helped us through grant applications. They helped us um, with printing and like logistical things like setting up tables and planning events. So they, they can be really, really helpful if you gain their support right away and develop a good relationship. And um, as ambassadors for voter registration, you guys are going to want to make sure that you're keeping up with any updates that are happening um, in response to COVID-19. Um, there are a lot of states that are like pushing for largely vote by mail elections in November. Um, there are new executive orders coming out with new plans um, for the November election. So just making sure that you are fully up to date and your information that you're putting out is fully up to date um, with any changes in procedures that are happening um, in your state. The new voters toolkit is being updated every Wednesday. Um, the the group, the training group on new voters, they like look at the Secretary of State's website, this website right here, vote.org, to see if anything new has come out. So the information in those toolkits should be remaining up to date. And if there's something big happening in your town um, and in your state, your mentor will reach out to you and let you know just in case you haven't caught it already. Um, but just making sure that your information is as up to date and as accurate as possible is really, really important. Voting and voter registration is confusing as it is um, in the United States. And now like coronavirus is going to make things a lot more confusing um, for people. So just making sure that you're staying on top of these things is going to be very important. And just some considerations um, that we like to have people keep in mind. Um, this first part is just balancing realistic expectations with ambitious ones. So think about the size of your team, think about the reach of your team um, and plan your activations and plan um, your campaigns based on that. Um, think about the size of your school. So like how connected are you with the rest of your grade? Like how, um, how much more do you need to reach out so people can learn about your efforts? Are people generally aware of what's going on? Are people aware of what you're doing? Just thinking about things like that. Um, think also about what information you can get. Um, so how many eligible seniors are at your school or can you get the names of those eligible seniors? Um, so that's another upside to getting administrative support is it's going to be really easy to understand what kind of information you can get right off the bat. And then 
Leading into the last thing, do you have administrative support and do you have a faculty advisor that can help you through this process? Um, faculty advisor is also really helpful as they can act as a liaison between you and the administration. Um, it's good to have like a teacher in your corner to advocate for you. Um, so just thinking about all of these things as you're going into the planning stages um, and the activation stages of your drive is going to be important. So I just wanted to take the last like five or so minutes here to brainstorm. Um, I know brainstorming over a webinar can be a little bit tricky, but um, if you all could just take like the next two minutes to drop some ideas for engaging virtually and like running a civic engagement drive in a virtual way um, in the chat, that would be awesome. Like I said, the the main two ideas that New Voters has kind of gotten behind and gotten behind planning is social media campaigning um, and and text banking, but we are also trying to think of ways to engage folks who don't have maybe access to internet or access to printing um, and like other considerations like that. So if you guys could just take maybe the next minute and a half, two minutes to brainstorm ideas for virtual engagement and then the minute after that to brainstorm engagement for folks with limited access to resources that'd be awesome um i will take this time to go through questions and see if i can answer them um as best as i can
I am back. Um, I, I've loved looking through all of these, um, all of these suggestions in the chat. Would you guys mind if I like took a, a quick screenshot, um, quick photo of all of your suggestions? Is that okay? Awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah, um, Sean, I think you had the question about the election judge. Um, also, Landon, that was a really good flag. Um, so basically, um, when you go to vote in an election, there's a group of poll workers that are like running that poll. So the election judge is the person who's like running the show, basically. I don't know actually if, if students can volunteer to be election judges. Um, but they are responsible for like all of the operations, setting up the polling location, setting up the machines and everything. Um, but there are also a bunch of like other roles within a polling place that are really cool and open for students to pursue. Um, when I did poll working um, for the 2018 midterm general and the 2019 primary, um, I was a clerk. So basically I was the person that like sat at the table and the voter would come up to me i would um, have them like sign in this like big voter roll book um and like they yeah just like sign in voters as they came in um and then make sure we were keeping track of everybody who's coming in the number of ballots we were giving out um the like id numbers of those ballots um so just stuff like that like administrative stuff like that um so it's a really, really great way to get involved with the election process. And also, um, I just wanted to flag for you all, since you might be interested, like, there's a lot of mobilization going on um, around poll worker recruitment, just because a lot of folks who work the polls are, um, are older and higher risk. Um, for COVID. So it would be really, really good to like get involved um, with you guys, younger people. <laughs> um, so just just to wrap up, um, what comes next? Um, here's the QR code with that form if you guys haven't filled it out already. Um, and I'll have someone or Milo actually put the form link in like the Discord or something so you guys can get it if you didn't get a chance to fill it out. Um, so fill out the Google form if you haven't already. Um, you can contact me at Akila at new-voters.org if you would like to like help coordinate some statewide new voters work and statewide new voters trainings, um, like for all the HSDA chapters at your school. And feel free to reach out with any questions or ideas you may have. I am so looking forward to seeing you guys um, sign up to be new voter schools. And I'm looking forward to seeing all the incredible work that I, I know you guys are um, capable of and are going to accomplish. So yeah, that is it on my end. Um, it has been so fun getting to talk with you guys today. All of those ideas for, um, for virtual engagement were great. Um, and again, like looking forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Um, bye everyone.